So this is part two of an overview of the Brookfield CD3 Texture Analyzer. In this part, I'm going to be taking a look at their Texture Pro CT version 1.4 software. Um, the first thing you notice as you load up the program is the, the max the program runs at is an 800 by 600 window size. Um, on monitor, modern monitors, this is almost comical. Um, per usual, the instrument does a little booting up noise. Um, the software doesn't add nearly as much functionality as one would hope. hope. Um, you're still faced with the issues that there isn't any form of calibration for the machine. Um, so I'm just going to set up a basic test here. Um, I've got my little foam globe from the previous video, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the, uh, the user interface and the software side. Um, from the original menu on the machine, there's really still only four basic types, types of tests you can do. Um, compression, uh, compression, tension, rupture, TPA. Uh, other tests such as adhesion, load shear, creep, it just can't be done. Um, you can't even program your own custom tests into the machine. Um, you know, custom tests that would model the behavior of your product can't be done. It just doesn't have that flexibility. Um, what I'm going to do here is a basic compression test. Um, target type distance, uh, target value. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to set the trigger load to 7 grams um, and then test speed to uh, half a millimeter here. Make it a, uh, a nice exact test. Um, in the setup, um, of course, they split these options, so like half of them is in your tests and the other half is in your setup. Um, I'm just going to switch my pre and post test speed. I'm just going to do 1.2 speed up a little bit. It tends to be it tends to take forever going down, so I like to speed that up. Uh, I'm just going to run this test. Um, and oh, it's, it's got a limit of uh, 100 points collected uh, per millimeter. Compared to Bookfield's competitors, um, this limit is about a fifth of what um, other modern texture analyzers can do. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this test. It should be fine for, for this example. Um, so the machine, it's, it's not nearly as fast as I've seen. Um, tends to be take its time going down. Um, not as much flexibility and it <laughs> tends to be pr pretty loud, especially if you're in a uh, in a relatively quiet environment. Um, okay, it looks like we had <laughs> by the fact that this doesn't look anything like what I was hoping. Um, I'm assuming that's a false trigger. So once this finishes, I'm just going to adjust the test settings to uh, to compensate for that. So that last test was a, a false trigger. Um, so I'm just going to bump up the uh, our trigger load here. The manual for the 50 kilogram CT3 load cell um, claims that you should use a 50 gram trigger force. Uh, in my experience, that's a pretty high recommendation for a modern texture analyzer. Um, you're probably going to get better data if you use something like like a 20 gram. So I'm sure on this test. Um, and then it asked me if I want to save the previous data, which I don't because it was a false trigger. Um, same error from before. Okay, I'm just going to run this test. So machine's going to initialize. Um, running multiple tests on this thing is quite the, uh, the time-consuming experience. Um, it's not quite as flexible in terms of the general setup. Um, it likes to initialize every time. It likes to start from zero every time. So you end, up, you end up spending a fair amount of time just, just waiting for it to do its thing. Um, to, to speed it up a little, uh, you can move the platform up, um, but there's really no guarantee that your operators will be able to set the platform to the same location um, every, every test or every repetition between days. So it's not always the most reliable. You can also swap on a, a longer probe but in our experience, it tends to make working with containers and odd objects like really more difficult than it needs to be. So what we've got here is our basic compression graph um, of, of my little cube or my globe over here. Um, and I'm just going to do a little bit of, of analyzing it, show you how the software just manages how you view data, how, how you look at the data. Um, 
the the general the general options you have are are pretty primitive. Um, it will record the data points at you know a hundred per per millimeter, but the actual ability to to manage it, export it, save it, view it, do calculations on it is really really restricted. Um, I should go wait for this to finish before I before I look at it. It's it's going up to its its start position right now. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that the actual navigation of graphs is very clumsy. Um, if you want to zoom out or zoom into your graph, it, it likes to zoom into the middle of the chart and save your graph. So one of the things you do is you end up having to use these, uh, actually drag the axis bars to view your data, which, oh my gosh, to pain, pain, absolute pain. Um, so the the comparison we'll make is it's 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 like moving the road if you're trying to parallel or park your car. It's just, it's just not worth it. Um, getting more into it, so there's really no way uh, to view the data very well on your screen. Um, what I'm going to do here is drop drop two anchor points on on the graph. Um, this will tell me some information uh, about the comparison between those two points on the screen, but. It really relies on on the operator's ability to actually click the individual data points on each on each replicate you do. Um, one step up from that, we've got a results tab, um, and let's say I'm gonna I want some hardness data. Um, what you'd expect is is checking results would actually show you on the screen, uh, which would which would be convenient. But the way they've designed this entire program isn't isn't necessarily uh, with the user in mind. So what you have to do is you have to hit the view report over here, which then goes ahead and prepares a report for you. And it spits out this entire page PDF that, you know, the, the number you wanted is uh, is here at the bottom. So you can imagine doing this for uh, for multiple pieces of data, what a pain in the ass this is going to be. Um, I mean, with this software, doing simple calculations such as analyzing your data or calculating a slope between two points is, is poorly designed. Um, there's no guarantee that, that two operators will drop these data points in the same location and therefore get the same result. So this tends to be a pretty big flaw for any academic user. I mean, the general low price of the CD3 is tempting, but once you find out how this machine works, you s it simply lacks any sort of repeatable uh, customization on any calculation. So if you want to do any uh, customized calculation, any two points, it, you're going to have to manually select it each and every time for, for each uh, replication. So let me show you one of my favorite features of the software. So I've got a graph here, and somewhere along the line, some guy's going to come in and He's going to want to see my numbers, not in grams, but in uh, kilos or newtons or, or any other in any other uh, format. So to change that, I'm going to skip over to uh, to settings. Now, any other software in the world, you want to display it in kilos? Sure, a little bit of math. Um, Texture Pro doesn't really do that, so I'm just going to change it to kilograms here. CD Pro must be restarted in order to change the units. Okay, so it doesn't really sound like I've got a choice here if I want to change the units. So it's, ni it's nice enough to uh, to close the program for, more, for me. Boot it back up again. What do you find? You find out it restarts the instrument. It resets the position of the probe. It has to reload everything. All your... Uh, all your units in the settings get changed. So not only does it unload your data, reset the machine and reset the program but it, it just doesn't like changing uh, changing units okay well I don't really want it in, in kilos um, I'd, I'd prefer it in grams so I'm just gonna swap that back and uh, yeah nice enough to restart the program for me Oop, here we go restart the instrument again It's going, it's going. And it was nice enough to uh, reset all my data again. Okay, so now that we uh, showed you how to change the units, um, we, we need to load our data in again. Um, 
So I'm going to open up my uh, data that I happen to save and uh, skip it back here. And it's nice enough to, uh, to reset that graph as well. So I'm just going to zoom back to where I was in that graph. Um, one of the things that I should note is that there's no way to, to unload data. So, for example, if you load up a, load up a couple data sets, um, the only way to unload some of those to put in, make room for something new, because uh, you've got a limit of only five data sets, um, is to close the program. <laughs> and that, that'll, that'll reset everything for you. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and, and, uh, and run a second test to show you how, uh, how two things compare. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skip back to my uh, from the results back to the the test page here. Um, so there's a, there's a fair amount of waiting time uh, between when I started the test and when it actually hit my my globe. So I'm just gonna manually adjust the beam down, uh, move the probe down on the machine. Now you really only have, have two options for moving this probe. You've got up and down one millimeter or up and down ten millimeters. So you end up playing this this guessing game in terms of uh, how close you want to be to the product with with you know the losing side being you, know, you hit your product and you got to do it over again. Um, what you'd think is that you'd be able to type into this number. Uh, you really can't. <laughs> that's just that's just there for for seeing it. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure the Brookfield software writer is just, it's just teasing you there. But remember to write down this number because in any case that you uh, change units or restart the program, um, your your test location is going to be lost. So doing tests between days, um, you're going to have to look manually write down uh, where these starting, where the you know where the beam is, um, just so you remain accurate in your tests. Okay, so I'm going to do a second test here. Um, um, settings are the same. Might as well. Um, I'm just going to move my bump probe down a couple notches here. 21, 22, 23. You got to wait for it to do the change before you hit it again, of course. So run a test. Um, what you'd assume here is that it would run the new test while remembering your previous test, because it's a fair assumption that doing material testing, you're going to care about what your previous result was, because it's about comparing them. So here it prompts me to save it. Um, if you run a test without without saving it, it just uh, overwrites it. So I'm going to click yes to save the data. Um, one of the things that that personally drives me insane is I have no sense of where the data is being saved. Um, it never anywhere in the program does it give you a location or a file directory in which to save your data. So something such as like emailing that data to somebody else or saving it or backing it up. I have yet to figure out how that works. And you basically have to uh, take Brookfield's word for it that, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we saved it on your computer. No, no worries, no worries. Um, okay, so there's my results. It's a little faster because I you know, jogged down a couple times. Um, now I'm going to want to compare this data side by side. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is that Texture Pro and Brofield CD3 is not designed to compare your data side by side by side. It's really, really inconvenient. Um, so you'll notice here that even though I saved my, my previous replicate, it's no longer on my graph. Um, the way the way to fix that is you have to you have to go back into your into your data tab here and actually load in your uh, your, your, your different your different uh, recordings here. Um, so every time you make a replicate, not only do you need to save it, but you need to load it into the program again as, as its own as its own data set. Um, so once we load in two, well, you know, great. I've got I've got two replicates. You know, that's two replicates, and you'll see that it will it will in fact draw them both. Oops, I freaking. I, um, it will in fact draw them both on the graph. Um, However, it's still not very useful in terms of uh, being able to compare the two very much. So the nature of a texture analyzer and the purpose of buying a texture analyzer is to make comparisons between products, between tests, between uh, different plants, to make comparisons over time, to make comparisons over formulas, over competitors. And the fundamental flaw of the software is that's not doable. Um, so you see here I've got these two graphs, but in order to do any sort of calculations on them, 
my best bet is actually to export this data individually and then run the comparisons in, in software such as Excel. Um, the actual Texture Pro software itself has barely any indication that, that comparisons are even doable. So not only does the software lock, lack any sense of being able to build preset calculations or the ability to create custom macros as seen by more advanced texture analyzers, but even as its ability to export the data is really weak. Um, as I mentioned before, your ability to export data can only be done one by one. Um, you can print out a, a PDF with, with individual numbers for an individual test. Um, or you can one by one actually go out and export each replicate as its own Excel file. Um, and for anybody that, that uses an instrument, that's, that's your only real AI option to do it, is export the, uh, them individually. So I'm not sure if Brookfield knows how computers work. Um, I keep expecting the ability um, to copy and paste the data, or even select multiple rows at once, or even manage multiple replicates at once. Um, but that's not really something that the Brookfield CT3's Texture Pro software can do. Um, copy and paste became a, a standard feature with Windows, uh, Windows 95, and it feels like Brookfield is still trying to catch up. In summary, the, the software for the Texture Pro is a huge pain to use. Um, I feel like Brookfield never considered the user experience, and I highly doubt they've even used their own product. Uh, the sheer inconvenience of doing basic tasks, such as viewing or managing two replicate samples at once, um, is it, just an awful experience. Um, the ability to import and export um, files is done one by one. Um, it's not designed for, to handle multiple tests. Um, so not only is loading five replicates into the software a pain as you need to do one by one, but the software can only handle five, um, five replicates at once. Um, any analysis of natural products, we're talking apples, corn, snacks, um, requires far more replicates to create a statistically relevant sample of your population. Something that the, the software just can't, or the machine for that matter, just can't handle. Um, in terms of the calculations and the macros of the machine and the customization of tests, they're just lacking in the software. Um, it, the, the software machine is not customizable and it makes the machine horribly inflexible. So it's clear to me that Brookfield really lacks experience with material testing. I get the sense that they don't actually use their own product and that may be in the case if they've spent 10% of their marketing budget on actually developing software and products that don't feel like they were, you know, made for Windows 95, then their instrument must might be barely usable. Um, after spending a while trying to figure out how to learn and to use the instrument and software, I feel bad for anybody who has to use the Brookfield C3 on a regular basis.